So welcome everybody, my name is Paul Smyers and I have this YouTube channel and I talk a lot about world transition and ancient history and various mysteries and so on. But today I'm talking about a very unusual subject to some people and that's the subject of tools and how important they are. We depend these days on various kinds of tools that if we didn't have them our life would be totally totally different and I encourage people to appreciate the fact that we live in a time when there are so many amazing, amazing tools available that centuries ago people would just like die for those kind of tools. I lived in India and I saw the Taj Mahal and you have to see the Taj Mahal and personally realize somebody built that without modern machinery. And it's not just that one building, it's the whole grounds and the whole surrounding thing and it's all amazing geometry and perfection and curves and marble and all kinds of stuff. And I go to that town, I went to that town again where the Taj Mahal is back in 2007 and I grew up around there <clears throat> long ago. And I'll tell you, their craftsmen there, they know how to use these primitive tools and they make stuff that will make you just jaw drop. Unbelievable stuff with these hand tools. <clears throat> I remember people, they, they're just making a hole, they're drilling something with a hand drill with just like a bow, but they made fantastic fine furniture that's still collectible. I have a, an example of it that's like 75 years old, he said, unbelievable. The, the, the craftsmanship that's in a small table. So <clears throat> what I'm getting at is we have an opportunity here to own and learn how to use a lot of tools. Now I'm in the real estate business and I I have a lot of training in electronics and I was a pilot and all that stuff, you know, aviation. You know, so basically I know a lot about tools and I always found when I was very young I had a little Volkswagen I realized you know I bought this book called how to fix your Volkswagen for the complete idiot and I figured well I don't know how I'm gonna pay for a regular mechanic to fix my car so I better learn how it works and then I can fix it myself so over the years I at least learned how things work and I've accumulated a lot of tools I enjoy having tools and I'm just amazed that you can buy a wrench that you can use for 20 years at a flea market it'll cost you a dollar and that thing will just last you can pass it down to your children that's how well they're made some of these old tools and I'm a realtor I go see some of these old buildings and I see some log cabins that have been staying for 200 years and someone built it by hand with little augers and they you know, they, that's how we got here. This the civilization depends on tools. So, I encourage people to learn as much as they can about how things work and how to get some tools, because we live in times when we're fortunate. I live in the United States, and you know, there's beautiful countryside here, and I have tools, and I have all the conveniences here. I live a pretty simple life, but. We in America are really blessed because there are parts of the world right now that they might have one light bulb in the house. Or they might have like two or three rooms and there's ten people living there. And there's people who are still making baskets and making things by wood. And they it's just amazing the ingenuity of the human spirit when you see so-called primitive areas. There are people up in the mountains of India today still live in the old-fashioned way they got their yaks or they got their like horses they're you know they're walking around the mountains and they're just fishing in the streams and washing their clothes by hand and they're just building their own houses their own way because they know how to fix things and make things now I'm in the real estate business and I see a lot of people they don't know how to take care of their house and so on and it's a very common problem you don't know how your house works and then they make these houses extremely complicated with all this fancy wiring in the walls and oh my god if something ever happens I mean forget it you know so my philosophy is simplicity in a house and simplicity in in understanding how you live so that you don't get over complicated so that when we do have power outages and we have situations we need to solve like out in the countryside and you got to know how the septic works and how your well works and how your heater works and all that stuff so <clears throat> back to the subject of tools there is a long tradition of having tools makes a civilization and there are certain tools like the plow or the knife or the sword or the bow 
the drill, the lathe, the, the, the ability to weave things, the loom. I mean, all those kind of products that were used for hundreds and hundreds of years, some of these products, the loom, for example, goes back a very, very long way. They've been weaving clothes for a pretty long time. And they've been tying knots and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to stress is we're in difficult times here. We're very fortunate in many parts of the world where we have everything going on. And it's no problem and everything. But I encourage people to be a little more self-sufficient because there's power outages problems. There's all kinds of things that can happen <coughs> that are currently happening in many parts of the world. So if you're in a situation where you got everything and you go down to the big box store and you buy anything you want anytime, <coughs> consider yourself very lucky. But there's a lot of people in the world right now who are going through basically the end of the world. Their their whole society is collapsing and there's... <laughs> so the points of tools, it's a fun thing to think about, but if you, if you don't know how to use certain tools, just get some things, learn how to fix things, learn how they work at least, and then it'll help you save a lot of money and aggravation and should the stuff hit the fan as you know like in the 20s and the 30s there was depression and there was like all kinds of climate problems they had the, the heat out in the midwest and everything people lost their farms people survived because they knew how to grow food and fix a fence and raise cattle and milk a cow they knew how to do things in what may be called a primitive way considered the way we have but like what good is a car that's a hundred thousand dollar car and a piece is missing and you don't know how it works it's useless so the point is that it's very important I'm talking to young people I'm talking to people my age I'm 71 years old I'm talking about people in their 30s 40s any age there's children grandchildren coming up we're going through difficult times and if you know how to fix and, and use tools and get quality tools, there's so many tools available right now. There's like, go to a yard sale or a flea market or something, you'll find amazing amounts of tools. Some of them are 100 years old, you can still use, you know, things like <clears throat> old hardware and stuff. It's amazing what they had back then. And again, I don't want to belabor the point, there's a little sense of humor here perhaps. Uh, to make it light, but at the same time, you know, consider the fact that things can go wrong in a home that you own, a car or a vehicle of some kind. If you know how to fix it, or you can diagnose it, and a lot of the problems are simple. I was a technician for a big company one time, Xerox, and 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the little simple things that you can fix easily. You know, then some of the bigger problems, yeah, but a lot of the things that happen in our <coughs> in our homes, in our cars and our vehicles and our mowers and all that are basically fairly simple problems and if you have some basic knowledge of electricity and tools and so on there's all kinds of information out there in books and galore and videos and stuff teach you how to do anything you want just get some tools and accumulate them because if the shit hits the fan excuse my language then it's certainly going to be happy to have all your neighbors have some great tools and what you don't have, they can have, and then you can share, you can generate you know, electricity, you can fix stuff. I don't have a tractor, but I live in the countryside. Worst case scenario, and a, rock, a tree fell down the road in my, my road here, someone with a big tractor that I don't know probably going to pull it out of the way before I even have to. So if you think about the ability to share tools sometimes there's a certain tool you don't need to have everyone doesn't need a big huge cnc machine or whatever but there's there's people who have the ability and they have the workshop space and the electricity and so on that they can own certain kinds of tools and what you can't to, uh, uh, buy and own these days you can certainly rent a lot of times now so thanks again for listening i hope i don't annoy people and get a little bit overexcited about the fact that I think we're going through a major transition here. This is uh, early February of 2024. And, uh, you know, I've traveled a bit in life. You've seen my other videos. I've been in foreign countries. And uh, consider yourself lucky. If you go to some of these countries, you come back, you go, I'm just going to kiss the ground that I'm walking on because in America, how lucky we are. There's so many opportunities and there's so many products. There are like <clears throat> landfills full of stuff that could be used by many people if you just try to reuse and recycle learn how to fix things and not throw them away so thanks again for listening hope to see you in some of my other videos uh, go ahead and watch some of them and uh, enjoy the content and i'd love to hear the con 
the comments and response and so on. Um, and I hope to see you again. Thanks.